Hello students! Welcome to Math and Magic. For today's video, we will continue our discussion about solving systems of linear equations into variables. If you are new to this channel, I recommend watching this video first. Now going back to our discussion, last time we say that solving linear systems can be done in different ways, including elimination, substitution, graphing in Kramer's rule. This concept can also be applied in different areas like number related, age, and geometric. And now, we will be answering problems involving motion, mixture, and investment. For our first example, a uniform motion item, Toff, in his motorboat, took 3 hours to make a downstream trip with a current of 6 km per hour. The return trip upstream took 5 hours. What is the speed of the boat in still water? Now when working with problems like this, it is helpful to construct a table indicating the given information. It is also important to remember the concepts of distance. This is given by distance equals rate times the time. Moreover, the rate of an object going with the direction of the current, that is rate equals rate of the object in still water plus the rate of the current. Lastly, the rate of an object going against the current, that is equal to the rate of the object in still water minus the rate of the current. In the problem, we will first define the variables that we will use. Here we let R be the speed of the boat in still water. D will be the distance covered in making the downstream trip and 2D be the total distance traveled back and forth. Next, we will construct a table. Column 1 will be for the direction that is downstream and upstream. For column number 2, we will assign the distance traveled. Third column will be for the rate and last column will be for the time. Afterwards, we will complete the table. For second column, we will write D to both downstream and upstream because the boat will travel just the same distance. For the third column, rate in downstream row, we will write R plus 6. As mentioned earlier, the rate of the boat will increase since the current of the water helps in accelerating the speed of the boat during downstream. Meanwhile, we will write R minus 6 in upstream since the speed of current is against the boat which results to decreasing the speed of the boat. For the last column, we will supply 3 Rs in downstream and 5 Rs upstream since those are the time indicated in the problem. After this, we will now construct two equations. Following the formula for distance which is given by D equals RT, for the distance of downstream, it will be equal to quantity R plus 6 times 3. And for upstream, it will be quantity R minus 6. Now simplifying the two equations, Using distributive property, for downstream, D is equal to 3R plus 18. Meanwhile, for upstream, D is equal to 5R minus 30. Now we can use substitution for this item. The value of D in equation 1 will be substituted to that of in equation 2. Equation will be 3R plus 18 equals 5R minus 30. Next, we will combine like terms. 3R will be transposed to the right side. It will be negative 3R. Negative 30 when moved to the left side will be positive 30. Evaluating the values, 18 plus 30, the sum is equal to 48. 5R minus 3R, the difference is 2R. Now, dividing both sides by 2, R is equal to 24. Hence, the speed of the boat in still water is 24 km per hour. For our second example, this one is a mixture problem. 
a 20% sodium solution and a 70% sodium solution are to be mixed to obtain 900 ml of a 30% sodium solution. How many milliliters of each solution must be mixed? Just like example number 1, we will first define our assumptions. Here we let x be the number of milliliters of 20% sodium solution and y be the number of milliliters of 70% sodium solution. Next, we will construct a table of values. Here, column 1 will be for the sodium solution. Those are 20% sodium solution and 70% sodium solution. Also, 30% sodium solution. Second column will be for the percent of sodium. Here, we will write 20%. 70% and 30%. For the third column, we will write the number of milliliters of solution. For 20%, as indicated in our assumption, we will write X. For 70%, we will write Y. And for 30%, since we will combine the two solutions, here we will write X plus Y. Lastly, for column number 4, we will write the amount of sodium of the solution. Here, we will multiply the percent and the number of milliliter of sodium to know the solution. For 20%, that will be 20% times x or 0.2x. For 70%, that will be 0.7y. And for 30%, that will be 0.3 times the quantity x plus y. After completing the table, we will now construct our working equations. Here, equation 1 will be about the number of milliliters of 20% and 70% solution. According to the problem, we need to make a new solution with 900 milliliters. Thus, equation 1 will be x plus y equals 900. For our second equation, here we will focus on the amount of sodium in the solution and mixture. We will multiply the last column for 20% and 70%, then equate it by 30%. Hence, equation 2 will be 0.2x plus 0.7y equals 0.3 times quantity x plus y. Before solving the system, let us simplify first equation 2. Here, we will distribute 0.3 to the binomial x plus y. It will be 0.3x plus 0.3y. Also, we may multiply 10 to all the terms in equation 2 so that it will be easier later to combine terms. Thus, equation 2 will be 2x plus 7y equals 3x plus 3y. Now, we will transpose 2x to the right side and 3y will be moved to the left side for us to be able to combine like terms. When simplified, it will be 4y equals x. Now we can use substitution for this item. Here we will replace x in equation 1 by 4y. It will be 4y plus y equals 900. Adding 4y by y, the sum is equal to 5y then equals 900. Dividing both sides by 5, y will be equal to 180. Therefore, there should be 180 milliliters of 70% sodium solution. Now solving for the number of 20% solution, here we will use equation 2 for y equals x. If y is equal to 180, 4 times 180, the product is 720. Thus, 720 milliliters of 20% sodium solution is needed to be mixed with 180 milliliters of 70% sodium solution to make a 900 milliliters of 30% sodium solution. For our last example, an investment problem, Emil has 800,000 pesos to invest. If a part of the money is invested at 2% simple interest rate per annum at Bank A and 3% interest rate per annum in Bank B, 
then how much should be invested at each rate to have a total of 21,000 pesos interest in a year? When dealing with simple interest investment problem, one must be familiar with the formula I equals PRT. Here, I is for the interest, P is the principal or the amount of money you invest, R is the interest rate, and T is for time, if that is annual, semi-annual, quarterly, or others. Going back to the problem, we will first define our variables. Here, we let A be the amount of investment at the bank with 2% interest rate, and B be the amount of investment at 3% interest rate. Next, we will construct a table. Column 1 will be for the type of investment. Those are investment at 2% and 3%. Second column will be for amount of investment. Here, we will write A for 2% and B for 3%. For third column, we will label this as the interest earned in a year. To obtain the values, we will multiply the values in columns 1 and 2. For 2%, it will be 0.02A. For 3%, it will be 0.03B. After this, we will now construct our working equations. Equation 1 will be for the amount invested at each rate given 800,000 pesos. It will be A plus B equals 800,000. For equation 2, we will use the information for the interests earned. Here we will add the values in column 3 and then equate it by the target interest of 21,000 pesos. Thus, equation 2 will be 0.02A plus 0.03B equals 21,000. Just like in example 2, we will multiply this equation to a constant to make the numerical coefficients whole numbers. The constant that we will use is 100. Hence, equation 2 will be 2a plus 3b equals 2,100,000. For this item, let's use elimination. Here we will multiply equation 1 by 2. It will be 2A plus 2B equals 1,600,000. Next, we will subtract equation 1 from the equation 2. 2A minus 2A is 0. This will be cancelled out. 3B minus 2B is B. 2,100,000 minus 1,600,000. The difference is 500,000. Hence, 500,000 pesos will be invested at bank B with 3% interest rate. Now solving for the amount invested at bank A with 2% interest, here we will use equation 1. That is A plus B equals 800,000. Substituting 500,000 to B, A will be equal to 800,000 minus 500,000 or 300,000. Therefore, 300,000 pesos should be invested at Bank A with 2% interest rate. Thank you for watching. God bless.